Hi everybody, Rachel here, Treehouse Knits, episode 47. How are you all doing? It's great to be back today. I have a lot to share with you as usual. I've been doing a lot of making. I'm always inspired to do lots of making during this time of the year. We survived our first winter weather event, which happened really early for us here. I am coming to you from the west side of Michigan, the beautiful state of Michigan in the Grand Rapids area. We survived that weather and now we're back to kind of our regular late November weather. Thanksgiving is next week and uh, I just have a lot of fun things I want to share with you today. First off, I'll remind you, you can find me on Instagram mostly as Treehouse Knits and I also have a website which I occasionally post on thknits.com. I'm also on Facebook as Treehouse Knits and you can certainly always find me on Ravelry where I am Treehouse Knits. I try and keep it simple for you. <laughs> Anyways, um, we had a giveaway last time. Thank you so much for all of the responses. It was so fun to see or to hear where you guys are watching me from and how you're watching me. Many of you are watching me with pets on your laps, under blankets, knitting. I want to say a special hello today to all those pets who are watching me. I'm envisioning your pets just kind of watching me on the screen. It's kind of scary, though, that I am on a lot of people's big screens. Lots of you watching on TV, lots of you watching on your iPads, iPhones, laptops, but most of you are doing something creative while you're watching me, and I think that's really cool. That means you are enjoying yourself. So thank you so much for however you're watching me. I did a random comment YouTube picker, and I will insert who won here. Shelly, you won. I think I have your address, but will you just shoot it to me again in uh, send me a private message on Instagram and I will send to you that uh, really cute holder for the iPad as well as some other little fun things, I'm sure. So thank you everyone who responded. Really fun to hear where you guys are watching me and what you're doing while you're watching me. Okay, so today I've got some finished objects. I've got some works in progress. I'll share with you the latest knit crate. And uh, at the end, I'll share with you a few things that I am loving currently. So why don't we jump right in and let's talk about some finished objects. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have inherited a loom and I'm calling it Franken loom because it came to me from my in-laws. And it was a loom that my mother-in-law actually purchased, I think on a Ravelry um, swap kind of page. And I believe she hadn't really opened it yet. She decided she just didn't have the time for it. So she sent it my way graciously. And when I got it, I knew absolutely nothing about weaving other than my second grade Abraham Lincoln weave um, portrait that I made with the strips of paper. Did any of you do that in first or second grade? Maybe it was first grade. We did the presidents. It was for President's Day and we took strips of paper and wove them under, over, under, over. That's pretty much all the weaving that I've done. Maybe a little bit after that. I did a little weaving last year, but that was um, with a peg loom. So I knew nothing really about rigid heddle looms versus a, and I'm still learning the, t the terminology, versus shaft looms. So uh, I didn't even know what kind of loom I had. And it had the pieces for rigid heddle and for, it had four, shafts. I'll insert some pictures in here as I'm talking. Uh, and it had a stand. So I did a little bit of online research, still was a bit confused, didn't know what brand the parts were. And I put on Instagram and on Facebook a picture of the pieces that I had and just asking for help, any help. And someone on Facebook said, I think what you have here is a Frankenloom. And right away I was like, oh, I got to research what's, what brand is Frankenloom? Well, it's a play on Frankenstein that it's made from lots of different parts from other looms, which I think is really kind of cool. And then Yori Oki, 
I think that's her name on Instagram and my friend Lynn she's three old daughter on uh, Instagram helped me out a ton with just kind of what I was looking at so I realized that I still needed a couple of parts for the loom and those were the heddle brackets that go on the side of the loom. I decided that I was going to make it into a rigid heddle loom and not try and buy a castle frame and make it one of those looms with the different shafts that lift up, lift up and down with your feet or with a lever. So a rigid heddle loom it was. I I did a little bit of digging and um, research and found out that the one rigid heddle that came with it was a 12 and a half dent heddle, which means that it has 12 slots and holes per inch, which means it's really for a lace or fingering weight yarn. That's what would fit through those holes and slots. So I went online and I just ordered from Kromsky two brackets, one for each side that would allow my heddle to be in the neutral position or resting position, in the top position and in the bottom position. And the way that a loom works, and I know many of you are way more experienced than I am with looms, but to make the uh, warps, warps are the strings or the yarn that goes front to back and wefts are the um, strings that you put through or yarn you put through um, that go left to right. And you remember that weft rhymes with left, left to right, warp is the long. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. Anyway, my heddle took lace or fingering weight yarn. I purchased the heddle brackets. I decided I would go with a Kromsky version and take it from there. Well, we got the brackets. My husband helped me um, screw those brackets in the correct place. And then I put my heddle in and the heddle just kind of fell. It wasn't, it's a 20 inch wide loom. The heddle is 20 inches, but with those particular brackets, I needed to trim off the bottom edge of the heddle, heddle sides, if that makes sense. So whatever I'm, what I'm trying to say is it was a little bit of work but you know that type of work helps you really understand how something works and if I would have just gotten a brand new loom and followed the instructions on how to use it I may not really understand it forces you when you have a Franken loom to do research read up on the different styles and I really appreciate how much I learned from this process of putting this together so I decided to use some yarn I'll just show you this is the yarn that I used it was an inexpensive skein that had many colors that I got from I think I got on our European trip and I I watched a video on how to warp a loom which I was very very intimidated about it looks like it's complicated but if you just follow the process follow the steps and take good care it actually you get faster and faster at it and this is my first woven piece Let's see, it would have come on. Um, these are the warps. These are the wefts. I used the same yarn. I love the fabric that it made. You can see it's really kind of wonky. My edges are pretty good. Um, but the piece, the way that I was beating it was really kind of probably a little too hard. So it's stiff. And when you beat it with your heddle, you're pushing your new weft uh, fiber into your piece and the harder you beat it the more dense of fabric you'll get it's very similar to gauge in knitting if you knit with really small with you if you knit with smaller needles you get a tighter denser fiber so I took this off this is my first I decided to keep going with that particular warp you can see all the waste I had uh, and I decided to use for my weft a worsted weight and I used a gray and it takes away from the color from a distance but up close I really like it uh, but I just was practicing practicing getting my edges straight beading straight and what I think is neat here as you can see here this was actually the start of my um of my process of my project and you can see I was beating really heavily there so the ratio of weft to warp the ratio is higher for the weft and you can see more of the gray I decided to beat a little less hard here and then it was more of an even weave where you see the gray just as much as you see the color so that's just a good example there of 
practicing my beading. Um, and I also learned how to do a hem at the edge, at the edges for a scarf. So this was a practice. Then I decided that I wanted to try and make a scarf. So I warped with a yarn. I can't even tell you what the yarn is. I'm sensing I'm uh, same colors here, but I'm pretty happy with how this scarf turned out. Uh, I did the the binding on both ends, left the fringe, fringe alone. I didn't do any twisting or anything because I really like how that highly spun yarn, um, you know, looks as fringe, but it's just not long enough. It's pretty short. So maybe what I should do is make this into a cowl or something. I don't know, but I was pretty happy with my my edges look really straight and you know similar to knitting in that when you throw this in the water the yarns marry and play better together it blooms it hides I mean it makes my edge look a lot better because it bloomed now that I'm looking at it so anyway that was my and I really concentrated on beading you can see when I started I was beading a little too hard I I caught myself and I beat a little bit. You can see how it's more of an even weave here. Here you can see more of the lighter color. And that yarn kind of striped, didn't it? Anyway, pleased with that. Just wish it was longer. And then I decided I wanted to try um, this yarn. Excuse me while I bend it down. I have two skeins of this. It's unique fingering. It's extra super wash, extra fine super wash merino. And I had two skeins of it. So I thought it'd be fun to knit up a skein on my knitting machine into a sock and then um, weave a skein and see what the differences were. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's long enough for a scarf. It's hard to show these. I think I'll have to insert some pictures, but here is see the yarn that I used the different colors and here is what still have to weave that in what the scarf ended up looking like I really love the middle let's see if I can fold it up a little bit here is kind of a good representation of the colors and then here is what the tube knitted up on my sock machine or on my knitting machine, I should say. And I will be inserting the heels and the toes in these. I love how this knit up and I think it equally is this beautiful woven up. So I just thought that was kind of fun to see the difference is, again, that's unique fiber. So that is where I'm at with my weaving. Right now I have uh, a, what is it called? Do I have the tag? I posted a picture on Instagram yesterday. It is a shopple, I don't know if I'm saying that right, gradient. And it's actually kind of like Zauber ball, if you're familiar with that, in that the color changes really gradually over time. And this is, this is the tag. And I love, 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 love how this is uh, weaving up. So I'm excited to see, I made it wider. This is my attempt at a wider scarf and a longer warp. So we'll see what I get on that. I'm so, I'm having so much fun with the weaving right now. I especially love that it's a piece of furniture almost that's in my living room and at any time I can just sit down and weave you know for five ten minutes and you make progress you know it, it's it's just a really fun thing to do and I appreciate getting that free loom from my mother-in-law <laughs> that was really nice of them to send it to me so that's my weaving and thank you again to those of you that helped me on Instagram uh, especially Yoriko Oki and three old daughter, Lynn. Thank you again for that. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of crochet. I decided to bind off my crochet blanket. I felt like 
I had spent enough time on it. It was big enough. Um, and it was time. This is my scrappy crochet blanket made with scraps from people that have sent me uh, their yarn scraps in in swaps and my own sock knitting scraps. Uh, I made it with all fingering weight. There's superwash and there's regular merino in this. So I will be hand washing it, which is not a big deal. It dries really fast. And I love this fingering weight version of this blanket. It's just, I've, I actually started this, I think three or four years ago. So it was really a milestone to take it off the hook. Is that what you say? Unhook it? I don't know, but it's fun to be done. Which leads me to my next one that I started last year. I saw someone on Instagram do a version of this just for Christmas. So this is my Christmas blanket. I am primarily using skeins that have uh, any tone of red or green in them. Some of them are multicolor, so you get a little bit of blues occasionally and golds, but for the most part, this is all reds and greens. So this is turning into my um, Christmas scrappy yarn blanket, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. I, I make these magic cake balls, and I'm incorporating a lot of my um, yarns that have sparkle in them. You can't see it on here, but you can see it at night when I'm crocheting on it in the living room. It's really kind of fun to watch. So, and I love to use my, what is this thing called? <laughs> Yarn it, I think. It just keeps everything tidy in the magic ball. So that is what I'm working on now. You can get information on both of these blankets on my Ravelry page that I will have a link to below. And I'm keeping it always in this bowl. It's, it's kind of like a little centerpiece that I like to keep on the coffee table in front of or behind the couch. My father-in-law did this bowl for me. He, I guess he, would you say he turned it? Uh, so I just really appreciate having it in this pretty bowl. So that is my crochet. I was so tempted to do another crochet blanket. For some reason, crochet has been something that's I've got I've caught the bug for. I showed you the machine knit socks that I did with that unique fiber. And let me put them this way. I might have to redo the one because they're not identical. They start out a little different. So I might have to redo one in the machine, but no big deal. So I did those. And then the other pair I wanna show you are the, let's see if I have the, I bought two skeins of West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colorway this year. And I put one through the machine and here is what it turned into. This'll go into my Christmas bin. I'm going to do the same thing. Don't tell anybody what I did last year for Christmas. I've got about, I would say, maybe 20 pairs of socks that I have uh, machined at the tubes. And then at Christmas, I'll let people pick out which ones they like. And I will custom knit in the heels and toes for them and then get them to the um, my gift recipients during Christmas break, hopefully I'll get them all done. But that's kind of where I'm at with socks right now and my Christmas basket. Oops, I'm knocking that down. Knitting. Well, first of all, I'm just, what am I wearing? This is an oldie, this is a classic. I think I wore this to my first Vogue Knitting Live show in New York City, I don't know, maybe five years ago. So this one's pretty old. I used a Freya Hand Paints self-striping for the top, and then the purple is a Swan's Island Targhee. And I did the three-quarter length sleeve because I only had enough yarn to do that. And I have just always really loved, this is a purple up on top. I just always love these colors together. I like jewel tones for the fall and, uh, 
Yeah, and you know what? I just made a simple yoke sweater. I don't even remember the pattern. It is in Ravelry, so I'll link it below. But I think what I did was I took a color work sweater, and at the time I was a little intimidated by color work, so I thought, well, why don't I just use a self-striping? And I really like the way it turned out. So my super, sum super simple summer sweater, my SS Hohe <laughs> sweater has come to a little standstill or a halt. I was doing the bind, not the binding, but the bottom edge of it. And I thought I was following the instructions carefully. And for some reason I'm off. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of back unknitting, probably six rows or so. And honestly, I'm not gonna follow the pattern. I'm just going to knit a an edge and call it a day, put in the uh, sleeves. But it really, I don't think it's changed much since we last spoke. But there is, it is. And I've got all the information, I won't repeat, uh, information on what yarns I'm using for that. So that's where I am with the SS Hohe. <laughs> Sounds like a ship, but it's my Super Simple Summer Sweater by Hohe Locatelli. Okay, let's talk a little bit of cross stitch, shall we? I have been inspired to finish my fourth of my season series by Country Cottage Needleworks. Pick this up oh, maybe a year or two ago now, and this is the winter version. When I picked it up, I was a brand new cross stitcher, and since then I've done other cross stitches. So this is done on 28 count. It's going really fast. I have it in my bag from um, Opera Joe. She is, uh, her bag line is Stitching the High Notes. That's her shop. But uh, this has been a really nice bag. And check her out if you're interested in any cross stitch bags. She's got some really cute seasonal ones out right now. But here's where we're at. I have it a little crooked in my frame. But yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory, those bunnies I am loving. I'm going to have to do little French knots for the eyes, which I'm not sure how to do that. Again, I will have to revisit, but uh, pretty simple. I've got summer spring and fall, I will have winter. And I've picked up a frame that I think what I'm gonna do is put these on sticky board. These aren't precious ones to me, these are pretty easy. They're gonna be just kind of decoration. So I think I'm gonna put them on, on acid-free sticky board and then mount that on some sort of fabric covered sticky board that's a little bit bigger so it frames it and then stick a magnet behind it and then magnetize it to the frame and then I can swap them out. We'll see. I don't think I have the frame here, but I did pick a frame from Hobby Lobby that I think will work good. So that's mainly what I've been working on. I did some sewing, decided that I wanted to take a whirl at just kind of making my own felt pad. So I used some extra fabric I had from a uh, couple bags that I was making and stuck in my tag, put a couple magnets behind there so that I can stick on scissors if I want. And this just holds all the little little pieces because basically you've got six strands to a skein here and I, I'm doing it um, two strands across two holes on this even weave. And so, you know, you pull your two strands out, you're left with some smaller skeins and I just wind them up and stick them on here and they don't go anywhere. I don't lose them. They're not all over the couch and myself. So I really like that. I do, however, still love, love, love the Bitsy Bobs from that's so Kelly. I'm using those. I'm using the one Bitsy Bob uh, for a project, but I went ahead. She had some winter ones that came out, and I just loved the winter scene on this one. But this is a Bitsy Bob, if you haven't seen. And this is different than my other Bitsy Bob in that it will hold more floss. I can turn it and hold more floss. So I've got a few projects that have you know, 15 colors maybe. And what's neat is you can open it up and then when you want to close it up, you can just swivel it. And she's even got a, a kind of vinyl material so that the flosses don't stick to the back of it. 
This is magnetized. This is a zipper yeah. where I can put all of my big skeins of floss. And she even has a floss holder if I want to use that too. So I love this. I think this is such a cool, cool concept. Uh, and check her out. That's so Kelly Co. All right, the other thing I picked up, I really love, this is kind of how I like to operate with the Q-snaps. I've got the needle minder here, my needle is on it, magnet, uh, magnetized on it. And then I love these little scissors. I just keep it on the back because that's where I'm normally snipping. And I, I got these scissors at, I think a local yarn store a while ago. Well, I found on Etsy, the sexy knitter <laughs> it's her name i'm sure you all know of her but she sells them in bulk so for my other cross stitch projects and other things these are safe to take on the plane i got a bunch of different colored ones for other um, projects for gifts that kind of thing so if you're interested in getting they're very sharp um, you can get some that have rounded tips which this one has a rounded tip which i actually like because it's staying on the back of my cross stitch and what if you know something shoves into it I don't want the tip of the scissor to go through so I appreciate that these are a little bit sharper tips but they're not super sharp but I know you can get really sharp tips too but they're they're really sharp and they're perfect tiny little scissors and I love that they're that I can magnetize it and keep it on the back of my cross stitch while I'm stitching so that is my cross stitch I think that's all I wanted to say about that I got knit crates and I just found this is what Shelly's winning her little stand I got my knit crate for the month here it is oh I got the blue it's quite stunning this is Natology glowing worsted colorway C it is uh, C as an SEA it is a super wash merino 30% silk 30% alpaca, 40% superwash merino, worsted weight. There's 150 yards per skein. So I have 300 yards of this really pretty color. The silk is making the color so beautifully shiny and saturated color. The alpaca makes it drapey. This is gonna be very drapey. You can tell just the way the skein is sitting. And the merino, so soft. Now a lot of times alpaca can be very prickly for me. I am not feeling prickles. So I think this could definitely be something I could wear around my neck or around my forehead. Two skeins. Check it out. I know they have their double down going on right now. I do have a code for Knit Crate if you want to use my code. I totally appreciate that. And thank you to those that continue to use my code for Knit Crate. It also came with Ahmad T out of London. They are a British family with four generations of passion for producing the finest teas. Tea lovers in over 80 countries enjoy our specialty blends and call Ahmad T their favorite. And in it, you get three tea bags, peach, strawberry, and mango. I am not a tea drinker, but I'm tempted to try these. These sound fruity and nice. Refreshing green tea. So that will be fun. Black. These are all black teas. So I guess they will have caffeine, mango, strawberry, and passion fruit. They have herbal infusions and green tea as well. So nice, nice, nice. Now the, this looks like a crochet pattern on the front that comes with it. This is a beautiful natural color. Very pretty. And these are the three uh, color options. Ooh, that Betta, B-E-T-T-A. That is a pretty, pretty, pretty burgundy color. And then there's the sock yarns. Ooh, those are nice. Those are nice tonal sock yarns. They would look beautiful with a textured sock. And that's what they did this month. Oh, look at the hat. Look at how nice that hat looks in that blue. Pretty colors. Oh gosh, look at the cables, how they pop. Yeah, that's nice. That yarn is spun really nice for cables. So 
Beautiful. Oh, look at how pretty with her red hair. That blue looks. Caudal fin cap and mitts. So it looks like there is enough yarn to make the cap and the mitts. Cool. Check it out as usual. I love Knit Crate. I'm a huge fan. I don't share things with you that I don't think are great. I love their, their fiber combinations. I love the business. It's quality, quality yarn at a really good price. So check them out. Check out my link below if you're interested in that. Okay, that leads me to three things that I am loving right now. The first thing is a series on, I think it's on Amazon Prime. Yes. And I was just searching for something to watch and this popped up. It's a Danish series called Seaside Hotel. And it has subtitles in English. But I was reminded that when there's subtitles, all of a sudden you forget about the subtitles and you just kind of relax into the show. The first minute, it took me a bit to kind of get back into subtitle stuff, but I love this show. It takes place, where does it take place? It's on the seaside. Uh, it's a beautiful old hotel that is being run by uh, a husband and wife and their staff. It's kind of got a small version of Downton Abbey where you you uh, get involved in the lives of the staff as well as the lives of the people that are guests in the hotel. It's funny, it's got drama. Uh, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful show. And if you like Downton Abbey, you I think will like this show. So check out Seaside Hotel. There's only two seasons available on Amazon Prime, but I saw that there are five or six seasons of the show out there. So I'm hoping they add seasons on Amazon Prime because the season two, I think was so good. Check that out. The other thing that I am loving, this is going to be silly, but I know, you know, a lot of us are ladies on here. I don't think I have a lot of male viewers. I think males would like this too. I kind of got bamboozled into purchasing this the last time I went to my um, to my hairdresser and I'm glad I did. This shampoo and conditioner are incredible for my hair. If I have fine, very thick hair and my hair can get weighted down by shampoos really easily and we have well water. So this shampoo is incredible. It's Purology Hydrate Sheer Shampoo. And it's been awesome for the winter. What I love about it is literally I put the size of maybe a quarter on my hands. Usually shampoos take, it takes a lot of shampoo to get my hair fully shampooed. This foams up so much and it has such a nice smell to it and such a good clean, but it's not that squeaky clean where your hair just is so dry afterward. I love this. Then I thought, well, I'll get the I'll get the conditioner too. I am so glad I did. This conditioner conditions really well. You don't need a lot, but it has such an amazing scent that is so energizing. It's kind of like a mint, um, I don't know, maybe tea tree. You've got to try it because it's like you threw a shower bomb into your um, shower and it just clears your sinuses in the morning. I can't explain it. You have to try it if you can. It's hydrate sheer condition. Silicone free, light airy feel. Yes. And it's for fine, dry, color treated hair. It, I just, I love 100% vegan ingredients. I, I'm impressed. So, Check this out. It came in a set actually. So you might find it uh, kind of a value set at your local, wherever sell, they sell Purology. Maybe Ulta has it, maybe Sephora, I'm not sure. Okay, my final, piece de la resistance. If I knew how to say that in Norwegian, I would say it. Oh my, this book has finally arrived. Uh, a couple years ago, thanks to Patricia P. Fortune, she introduced me to Selbu Mittens. And I, as you know, if you're a longtime watcher, I got addicted. And last year I knit so many pairs of these Selbu Mittens. I still, I have mittens that I need to finish. I love them. I'm addicted to them. I love the story of them. 
I purchased the book in Norwegian because I thought, well, gee, all of the, I mean, there are so many charts in this book. Look at all the charts that I thought it was worth the price alone. I got the book and then all of the rich history and just background, it was all in Norwegian. I used a lot of Google Translate over the last couple of years and now it's in English and I can read it in English and I just, oh, I mean, look at these mittens. This is a classic for anybody who has a library of knitting books that if you love to knit mittens, if you love color work, you know you got to get this book, right? You know you need it. And it's half the price of what the original one was, probably because the original one had to make its way here from Norway. <laughs> but Selbu Mittens and Bardsgard discover the rich history of a Norwegian knitting tradition with over 500 charts and 35 classic patterns. Yay! I, I feel like we need a party to celebrate this book. This is huge. This is a tome, a knitting tome, a classic. So reading it and reading it in English, thank you so much to those of you who translated. Well, folks, that's it. We have reached the end. I'm trying to think what's going on here. I am headed this weekend to Madison, Wisconsin, to the Wisconsin Purdue game. I am a Michigan Wolverine, uh, but my husband is a Wisconsin Badger, and we are going to go with my cousins to that game and just have a good time. It looks like the weather is going to be 40 degrees and sunny, perfect, perfect football weather. So I'm looking forward to that. And for a couple of hours, I will be a Wisconsin Badger this weekend. And we'll resume being a Wolverine right after that. But uh, yeah, have that going on and then we'll celebrate Thanksgiving here in the U.S. next Thursday. Um, just enjoying everything. I'm starting to get a little freaked out about Christmas coming. And Thanksgiving is so late that, uh, yeah, there's a lot to do once Thanksgiving hits. So with that, I will say goodbye. I hope you have a great week. And we will see you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye. Bye.